Hello, this is part two of the wavy flag lesson, and we're going to start animating this flag. So on your screen, you'll want to have it situated so that you can see a little bit of space above your object. You're going to be pushing things upward a bit. Now be sure that your flag bone layer is selected in the layers palette. And then go over here to the select bone tool and then in the timeline go to frame 1 and now we're going to select bones across the top but not all of them. Leave this one on the left off. You're only selecting these right now. In the tools click on transform bone and now just grab onto this circle on the top of this first bone that's selected and click and pull down and to the left so that it looks something like this. Now deselect all these bones, edit, select none, and then with this uh, transform bone tool still selected over here, what we're going to do is we're going to push some of the bones over. Not this one, not the first one that got moved, but starting with the next one over. So if you hold your shift key down and then push over a little bit and do each one pushing over a little bit, they'll stay straight and that'll be kind of helpful. Okay, so just as you see on the screen, you don't want it to be too much, but um, it would help if they were kind of evenly spaced. But even still, if they're pretty close, it'll be okay. And now go to frame nine in the timeline. And with the transform bone tool still selected, grab this bone here, the top circle of it, and push it back to its uh, previous location. You can see the marker there. All right, so just, um, and this doesn't have to be perfect either, but pretty close. And push all the ones that you've moved. All right, once you've done that, we need to go back over to the Select Bone tool, reselect them again, and back to Transform Bone, and then push them upwards. So then what you should end up with between frame one and nine is an action that looks kind of like this. Now go over to frame 18 and then select all of these keyframes here on frame 1 and only frame 1 just like that and we'll copy and paste them onto frame 18. So paste. Now from 1 to 18 it's got a back and forth motion so go back to frame 18 and select those keyframes. Right mouse button click. Choose cycle. In the keyframe box, choose relative and then close that. And if you play it, it should be going back and forth and look like that. If you need to pause to catch up, please do so. All right, now the next thing that we're going to do, I'm going to zoom in on the timeline so that you can see mine really well. So there, my keyframe dots are really big. First, I need to go back to frame zero. Okay, and then I'm going to deselect everything, edit, select none. And in the tools, I'll click on the select bone tool. Now I'm going to grab some bones across the top, but I'm going to skip the first one and the second one on the left. I'm going to select just these. And looking down in the timeline, now I need to select keyframes for only those selected bones, which means all the keyframes along the rows of these red colored icons. 
So just these here. All right. Don't grab any of the other keyframes or this won't work. And then I'm going to click with my left mouse button and shift them to the right three frames. One, two, three. And now back up here, I'm going to choose bones again, leaving off the one to the left that's selected. So I'll just grab these. And the same routine down here, clicking and dragging and selecting only the keyframes along the rows with the selected bone icons and drag one, two, three. I'm going to repeat this pattern, leaving off the one to the left every time up here on these uh, column of bones and down here selecting one, two, three. Select up here, select down here, one, two, three, and I'll go a little bit faster. It's getting a little tedious to watch me perhaps, but it's the same process over and over. And finally the last one and select one, two, three. And now if I play it, wavy flag. Now go back to frame zero and we're going to make a small adjustment to that grid on that layer. In the layers palette, I'm going to click on that layer. All right, remember the grid here. In the tools, I'm going to go over to the select points icon and I'm going to select all of these points here. All right, I left out the points on the right edge and the left edge. And then I'll click on the curvature tool. And it looks like I may have done this already, but you can put a 0.30 in here in this field next to curvature. All right, and that should make your flag look a little smoother on the edges while it's flapping in the breeze. You can experiment with this and try different numbers too, okay? And the rest is very simple. You'll want to apply an image now onto this vector layer. So be sure you're on frame zero and that you've got that layer selected over here in the layers palette and click on your select shape tool. All right, select the object and in the styles, go to effect, click on the drop down, click on image texture and then you would click on Select Texture, find an image that you want to use, and click Open. Now you probably don't want it to tile, but that depends on the texture that you've chosen, right? I'm going to pick Don't Repeat and click OK. And then of course, if I need to adjust the sizing of that, let me click away so I can see it better. All right, if I need to move it around, I can move it around. If I even want a little border around my flag, then I could make that image even smaller. And then I've got a border plus the image for the flag. Now I find that if I want to test this and actually see the image and how it looks when it's uh, flapping around, I do have to stay on that vector layer and I do have to have the select shape uh, chosen and then I can push play and watch it, All right? See if I like it. I notice if I go back to the bone layer here in the layers menu and then push play, then I don't see it anymore, okay? So that's just a little tip with that. So that's the basic uh, waving flag. You know, you may be able to tweak it a little bit based on the way that this process works in order to get perhaps a little bit different wave on your flag. And if you have any questions, please email me.